You ever felt the BBL that was so soft it felt real? That's how soft your plane should be when doing the soft field takeoff. Let go! Boom! What up, though? The soft field takeoff, one of the most fun takeoffs you can do in an airplane. This is oftentimes designated for those times when you're taking off on a surface that isn't hard. So anything like grass or gravel is a great way to utilize this form of takeoff. It is also just fun to do anywhere, even if you are on a hard surface, just for fun. The whole objective and whole point of this is if you're on those softer surfaces, the plane has a likelihood to sometimes maybe get stuck or maybe move a lot slower. So you want to try and get into the air as soon as possible. So by executing a soft field takeoff, you're kind of protecting that nose while it's still on the ground, keeping that weight off that nose, allowing the aircraft to get in the air as quickly as possible so you can start your takeoff. That's the whole objective there. Think about it from this perspective. If you were to push a car, get behind a car and push that car and that car was on the pavement, it was on the asphalt, it would be a lot easier to push if it was on the street versus if it was in the grass. If it was in the grass, it'd be a little, that same car would be a little bit more difficult. If it was on gravel sometimes, it'd be a little bit more difficult. Why? uneven surfaces. It may get stuck in that softer kind of ground than it would on a hard surface. So the same exact thing happens with your aircraft, which is why you want to study and be able to execute a soft field takeoff on command. Boom! Before we get into the mechanics of a soft field takeoff, you first want to reference your POH, the Pilot Operator's Handbook, because you're going to need two pieces of information. The first piece of information you're going to need is you're going to want to know what degree of flaps is needed for your particular aircraft to execute a soft field takeoff. This is going to vary from aircraft to aircraft. Some aircraft it requires 10 degrees of flaps, others it may require 20, 25. So depending on your aircraft, you want to determine that piece of information and you don't want to guess at this. Refer to your pilot's operating handbook and it'll tell you exactly the degree of flaps that you want to use before executing this maneuver. The second piece of information you want to look up is the fact that you may need a certain amount of runway, a little bit more runway to execute that soft field. So you want to make sure you understand exactly how much runway is necessary based on the POH and how what degree of flaps are necessary based on the POH. Once you got those two pieces of information, let's get into that diet. Hey, the primary thing that you have to remember to execute any soft field takeoff is protect the nose of the aircraft at all times. Protect that nose like you protect your woman. Protect that nose like you protect your family. That's all you got to remember. If you remember that one little thing, you can execute a soft field take off. Let go. Boom. So the first order of business you want to do is you want to make sure when you're in the aircraft and you're getting ready to taxi down to the runway, you want to be pulling back on the yoke. Even if you're not on a grass kind of taxiway or grass runway at the time and you're just executing and practicing this on a hard surface on a hard runway, still practice it as if you're on grass. Because practice, what you practice is actually what you're going to end up executing if you're ever in that situation. Remember, everything that you do in the aircraft, oftentimes it's about muscle memory. You know, think about your emergency procedures and things like that. This is why you always want to flow through them and go through them and practice them as if there really is an emergency. Because if the situation presents itself, you're not going to be thinking that clearly and you're just going to go based on muscle memory. So good practice makes for good performance when it's actually time to execute. So even with this situation right here, even if you may be at a situation where you're at your local airport and it's a hard surface, still practice this as if you're on a grass surface. So you want to pull that yoke back even while you're taxiing it as if you were on a grass taxiway leading up into a grass runway. Why are you doing this? Again, back to that original thing. The only thing you got to remember, protect that nose. You're getting that weight of the aircraft off, the, you're lifting off that front nose and trying to lift that weight off of there to protect the nose. The light, the lighter the weight on the front of the nose of the aircraft as it goes through that uneven, grassy or gravel kind of territory, the better it's going to be for your aircraft, the safer it's going to be. Protect that nose at all costs. Boom, so now you're rolling on the taxiway with that yoke pulled back, everything looking good. Configure your aircraft right now while you're taxiing before you enter the runway. You want to have that configuration. So you've already referenced that POH. You already know what degree of flaps is going to be necessary. So you already put that in. Already put in those flaps. 
already be ready to go long before you even get to the runway. So when you get to the runway and after you make your calls and you get ready to enter that runway, you're already configured. Remember, one of the things you want to do here is you don't want to be stationary for too long. Remember, you're acting this out as if you're on that softer surface, as if you're on grass, as if you're on gravel. You don't want to do anything that just have an aircraft sitting in that softer surface because that can cause a problem where it may not move as create a lot of drag it may not move as smoothly and as quickly like it would on the harder surface so one of the things you can do by, by doing this is protecting that nose as you're taxiing down and then also to anticipating and staying ahead of the aircraft so you can just continue rolling by already having it configured before before you even get to the runway and then when you get to the runway roll right and you made your call and everything's clear roll right onto the runway and line it up and keep going all in one smooth movement, trying not to stop. Again, the whole purpose here, you don't wanna remain stationary and allow those wheels of the aircraft to become embedded into the ground where it makes it difficult to even take off and move. So again, anticipate, stay ahead of the aircraft, roll from that taxiway right onto that runway, everything nice and smooth. You have that yoke pulled back, you're lining that thing up on the runway, and then you can execute the next steps. Let's go, boom, check it. You know the vibes, now you're rolling that thing onto the runway, you got it all nice and straight. A lot of the things you're gonna do from here on out are the basic things that you're gonna do on every takeoff. For number one, you're gonna maintain that center line. You got that yoke pulled back, it's been pulled back this whole time, you're gonna maintain that center line. You're gonna smoothly push in full power. After you've pushed in full power, you also want to make sure you're also correcting for any winds. If there's a wind coming from the left or right, just like you would on the normal takeoff, you want to make sure you're crabbing or turning into that those ailerons into that wind so you can compensate for that. So these are normal things that you're doing. Your feet are on those rudder pedals, working it, keeping that aircraft straight and keeping everything streamlined as you're going down the runway. Beautiful and perfect. So you always want to make sure you're doing the basics. As you put that full power in, your eyes immediately look down and glance at those instruments to make sure we in the green, baby. Foliage. You want to make sure you're checking everything. This should, All this should be systematic because then you do all of this on a normal takeoff. So you don't go check, just because this is a soft field, you don't go flipping the script and doing a bunch of different new stuff. It's only a few elements that are new. So follow your same routine that you would do in this aspect as you would on a normal takeoff. Oh, so here's where that thing gets spicy and flavorful. Okay, you've pushed in the power. You got that yoke pulled back. At this very moment, you may feel the nose start to creep up off the ground. It's coming up off the ground a little bit. This is exactly what you want. Remember, the whole objective is protect that nose. But when you start to sense that, now you got to start to move that yoke. That yoke that you had back here, you got to start moving it forward just a little bit here. So you got that. So it's nice and smooth. You had it all the way back. You're on the runway. You're pushing the full power. You're checking your gauges and you're moving slightly, just a little bit with that yoke. What that's going to do is you want the nose to come up off the ground, but you don't want to do a tail strike or just to be completely like up in the air like that. So you don't want to leave it all the way back. You want to kind of just have it gradually, just a little bit up off the ground, making it nice and easy for you, getting that, keeping that weight off that nose. That's the objective you're looking for. So it's nice and smooth, bringing that yoke up just a little bit, keeping everything, keeping that sight picture, maintaining that center line, hugging like you hug your woman. Boom! So at this very moment, since you got leaning back on that yoke and you released it just a little bit and got that nose up off the ground, and you continue going down the runway, you know what's getting ready to happen. You're getting ready to lift up off the runway, baby, nice and smooth. And that's one of the objectives. You want to get in the air as soon as possible simply because you don't want to be on that soft surface. That's why they call this a nice soft field takeoff. So you're getting off that soft surface and you have that aircraft in the air. Very good. You're just off the ground. And at this very moment, you want to do one key thing. You want to level off ever so slightly at this point and the reason why is because you want to ride ground effect we're in ground effect baby just like you can be in ground effect on landings this is a beautiful place to be in ground effect on the takeoff and allow the, that air to continue to get over the wings in a nice strong position before actually increasing that rate that climb rate to either vx or vy whatever you're looking for at that time so you're basically taking off in ground effect so you're taking off as soon as you come as soon as you have that yoke back, releasing it a little bit, allowing that nose to get up off the ground, and then just riding ground effect on the runway. 
as you continue to go along. And then once you get up to speed, once you get to the appropriate air speed, then increase it to that VX and VY. You can really ride that ground effect for a nice long time if you have it nice and leveled on the runway. It's a nice fun thing to experiment with and it kind of tests your skills to be able to ride low to the runway without actually touching the runway. You don't want a bounce effect or anything like that. It's just simply coming up a little bit and then riding that ground effect, riding that ground effect, left checking that airspeed when things are appropriate, boom, excel that thing, VXBY. One time, let go! Hey, so after you got that thing in the air, you've been riding ground effect down the runway on your takeoff and you go into that VX and then you continue to climb out. And then of course, after you approach that VY, now you can begin to retract those flaps. The flaps that you had in after you quote unquote cleared the obstacle, you can begin to retract those flaps and put them back to zero and go from there. Hey, remember two things, protect that nose at all costs. We in ground effect, baby. Ride that thing for as long as possible. And don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun information about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. And if you're already a pilot, just a fun way to stay proficient. Hey, love you one time. Let go!